Hey, it's Joel. Look at all of these things. I printed them out. Oh, and by the way, I have a bench. I have a workbench in my garage. I just built it. And these, <laughs> God, there's so many of these things. These are gonna come in super handy for a specific problem. And, and it's very practical. And we're gonna compare it versus what you might, I don't know, find online. So let's get to it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. A portion of this episode is sponsored by Ridge Wallets. Head to ridge.com forward slash 3D Printing Nerd or click the link in the description. You dingus. There you are. Welcome back. These, all of these, oh, that's a lot of them. These are in High Five Blue and these were printed on the Zmorph VX because they tweeted about something called a contour gauge. And right around Father's Day, I was seeing a lot of ads on Facebook for these contour gauges. The idea is simple. If there's, uh, well, the idea that I'm thinking is simple. Let's say there's a pipe or an irregular shape against a wall and you're laying down flooring or you're putting up trim or you know something like that. You need to be able to get the contour of a non-standard size, shape, edge thing. So that's where a contour gauge comes in. And the ads I've seen, they push up against it. And then all of these little fingers essentially hold the line, the irregular line, which then you can lock in place and bring back to your material and you trace it on and then you're able to cut it out. And it's awesome. <laughs> like I wanted one of these things. I really, really wanted one, but I knew I could 3D print one and I wanted to give that a try first. Thankfully, the nice people at Zmorph tweeted out one of their projects and it was this, this contour gauge. I happened to have a Zmorph VX and I printed out 110 of these things. There was only one failure. This was the failure. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try to get you up close. This was the only failure out of all of these. Like, <laughs> there's so many of them. And what we'll do is we'll build ourselves this contour gauge and then we've, I've got a piece of wood over here that I wanna find the contour of. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Just put those there. Hold on just a sec. Yeah, that's the Zmorph VX. Look at that, and the pieces are done. One, two, three, there we go. These are the other pieces that you need. And uh, uh, well here, let's, let's take a look at it. So this is one of the fingers here and it slides on. And then it's kind of like that. You push it up against the edge and there's, there's a whole bunch of these along here. So here's the gauge and if you push up against Dang it, you push up against an irregular surface, it's gonna have that surface right there, the shape of it. And then, so imagine it, but just full of these little fingers. And then it's got these, these ends that go on the end. And then you use the CNC milling and laser cutting features of the VX to make a top and a bottom. And then you test it out. So there's a lot of these. I'm gonna bring you closer. You're a little bit closer to my bench where we can work on stuff and my, my iPhone, is it recording? It is. Okay, good. My iPhone is right here. So you should be able to see my hands. There we go. First, this piece right here, uh, you can see there's a little bit of a, a line right there just because it's FDM, it's extrusion, bottom's pretty good. What I wanna do though, uh, I wanna sand it. I just wanna get some of the irregular surfaces off. This is the piece that they have to slide on, so it makes sense to just kind of make it a little bit smoother, you know? And then I'm gonna sand the edges flat, just because this is FDM, and FDM is not, uh, I mean, it's as precise as it can be, but sanding an edge will always make things a little bit better. Here are the ends, and they will go kind of like, that, kind of like that. <laughs> Got him. That's not too bad. Let's see. Oh, geez. Okay. Those fit pretty well. These are the screws and the nut that I'm going to use. And these, well, here, take a look. Look at these. I've already sanded these a bit. These were milled on the Zmorph VX. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit play. I use 
used its milling head to cut out the shape. I did a face pass because the material is thicker than it needed to be. And then uh, I cut it out. I used my bandsaw to cut out the shape fully because, you know, it leaves some sides in there so it doesn't knock around. And then I used the laser attachment on the VX to put on this, uh, this Joel bot. The Z-Morph VX template had a ruler, you know, ruler markings, but pff, who needs that? Who needs that when you got a Joel bot? And uh, the laser etching, it's not perfect. And that's because I don't really know what I'm doing, but that's okay because I'm learning. Learning is important. So there we go. That's pretty good. Now we need to get all of these on. And because this is FDM, I know that um, they're not all going to slide like they should or like they could. I'll tell you what, let's get, let's get an end on and then let's just stack them up and then let's see what happens. See how some of them fall and some of them don't? They bind just a little bit. So we might run into some issues and uh, we'll see what happens. Ugh, some of these are tough. Jeez. Just a sec. With PLA materials, or plastics in general, but PLA especially, you do have to worry about the temperature of the material when you're sanding. Friction's gonna cause it to heat up, and then instead of sanding the material, you're gonna be pushing it around and smudging it around, so that's no good. But right now, this is super smooth. Super duper smooth. We should get better sliding. <laughs> okay, I have an idea. Uh, so, as these are printed right here, as, as you take a 90 degree corner, the problem is it's not 90 degrees because the, the plastic is, you're, it's, you're trying to create a 90 degree corner with a round plastic extrusion. So that's not gonna help. So what I think will help is rounding these corners. <sighs> Let's see if this works. It's a little bit better, just a little bit but I think we're approaching uh, diminishing returns, so I'm just gonna load it up. One eternity later. There we go. Wham. Okay. Some of them are still a little tight, so. So all of these are ones that will require a little extra encouragement to move. Not too shabby, not too shabby, I mean, might work. So here we go. Look at that. I'm going to put that right there. This one. I'm going to put right there. These are my chosen screws. Uh, one of the issues that I ran into is that I couldn't find the right sized screws for this project. They are a little tall. So it means that while I will be able to screw these in no problem, it's just gonna be a little too tall on one side. I don't know, I got, I got a lot to learn when it comes to CNC milling and uh, laser etching, laser cutting. But look at that! Do, 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 do. This is what we have and we gotta test it. So here's what, I've, here's what I've got. I've got this piece of wood right here. This is, I believe, a two by six, two by eight. Seven and a half ish. Two by eight. Two by eight. And it's split. Oh. So here's what I want to do. I want to find this contour right here. This one. This one right here. And that's where this will come into play. So let me get a couple screws to hold this in place. We will then get the contour. And then we will trace it out on this piece and see how it fits like that. We're going to flip it over. And we're going to cut it out on the bandsaw and we're going to see if we can just get it to fit that contour. That's what we're going to do. So first, let me find some screws. There we go. That is not going to move, which means we can now push this against it and get the contour. What do you say we do that right there? Look at that. That's fun. There we go. So I'm just going to push those in to make sure they're making contact. Okay, I have no way of, oh boy, that's loose. <laughs> I have no way of locking this down. So I'm just gonna go here. And I'm gonna transfer it directly to here and I need to get a pencil. There we go. Okay, it's a really, really faint line, but if I extend it that way, sure. And then I bring it off. 
There we go. I'll just cut that on the bandsaw right there. And then I will trace that line right there and it should fit. It should fit. So I got it. Oh, the band, phone's on the bandsaw. Look, look, look. There it is. I'm gonna have to move you. Sorry. This, uh, this is my new bandsaw. It is a, it is a when. I spoke to my buddy Bill over at Punish Props and he said, I should get you a link to the one that I recommend to people. And it was this one by Wen. Cheap too, like 120 bucks US, not bad. It was delivered next day. Really happy with it. So I wanna be able to cut this. So here we go. Here we go, this right here. That's the line that I'm gonna try and follow with the bandsaw. Here we go. Okay. Look at that. So remember, this was the piece that we had and then we, we cut it from there. No, we cut it from there. And then I cut that shape out. And that's that shape that we made with this. So now the moment of truth. <laughs> that's not bad. Here, here, look, look, get closer, get closer. There we go. There we go. So here's the piece. Now look, it just has to fit right there. And so any variance, there's, there's little bits of variance here that you see that, um, that it's, it's not perfect, but I think that's just the variance in the bandsaw and my ability to use it, right? Because I haven't used it that much. You look at someone like Izzy Swan or, or Jimmy Duresta and they just, they, they can carve with their bandsaw. I'm not there yet. At this point though, I mean, that's great. This episode is not partially sponsored by this orange dead blow hammer. No, it is by, oh my goodness, the Ridge. Wallet. Ridge Wallet is a unique industrial sleek wallet that doesn't fold in your pocket. It can hold up to 12 cards. It comes in 30 tasty flavors and you can test drive it for 45 days and still get a full refund. Head to ridge.com forward slash 3D printing nerd and use code 3D printing nerd to get 10% off your order and free worldwide shipping. That's right. That's pretty cool, right? I wonder. Ow. Don't do that when you get your Ridge wallet. Again, ridge.com forward slash 3D printing nerd, code 3D printing nerd. You get 10% off and free worldwide shipping. Back to the episode. So really at this point now, is this worth it? Well, this sort of result right here is great. And I got that result thanks to 3D printing. The laser cutting on this side and the CNC milling on this side, this piece and this piece, I know I just went from a template, but these could easily be 3D printed, like no problem 3D printed. Here's where it gets interesting. If you're stuck at home for a few days, you could make this. So I printed 10 of these at a time and each pass I think took two and a half hours and I printed 120 of them. I would print and then I would go check it and then pull them and then start to print again and then and then print them and pull them. And then the, the other pieces, this and the centerpiece took two and a half, three hours, something like that. So it took a lot of time printing just because it's a lot of the same thing. So yes, yes, 3D printing works for a contour gauge. We've proven it with this, but at the same time, there are options available that make it easier for you to get it quicker. I mean, this, you could take the model and you could print a bunch and extend it out this far if you needed it. But chances are the section of flooring that you need to find the contour of or the irregular shape you need to find the contour of, it's not that long. It's a fun project. I've got a link to it in the description. And if you wanna take it on and you make it, I'd love to see your results and whether or not it's accurate. And if you print it or make it and use it, please tag me socially. I'm. 3D printing nerd on the Facebook, Joel Telling on the Twitter, Joel Telling on the Instagram. So uh, yeah, well, this was fun. You got to see my new bench and I got to do something on it. I'm really, really excited about that. This was a fun project. This was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any ideas for this back wall, let me know. A big thanks for coming on this journey of us making this. And uh, I really, I really like this. And so if you like it as well, 
give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. Look, look, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Lots of love from me here in Seattle. And as always, high five. <laughs>